Hey, where are you going? Champ? Slugger? Hey, cowboy. Where are you going? Where are you going? I'm going out! Hey, everybody. It's Caleb here, and I'm just driving close to Montevallo, Alabama today, but I've had a lot of people ask me about the three maxims of tactics. Speech isn't violence, tolerance isn't love, and disagreement isn't hate. So I thought I might elaborate on one of them since I have had people asking me for a little more explanation on what those really mean. Now the first one, speech isn't violence, it's actually kind of making two statements. Because of course it is saying that speech, in other words the rhetoric in which we engage with one another, is not violence. We can disagree with one another, we can be passionate about our side of the argument, but that doesn't necessarily equate to violence. And even when somebody says something that you really dislike, that really bothers you or offends you, you know, is, even if they say something that is morally incorrect, it's still not violence. That's the first message that is conveyed by this. But the second part is just as important, maybe even more so, and that is that violence isn't speech. Because it's saying that these two things are not equal, that they are not the same. And so while it's saying speech isn't violence, in other words, the things that you say to a person, even if they are really hurtful, they're still not the same as violence and should not be treated as such. The inverse of that is that violence is also not speech. And I think that this is incredibly appropriate considering what just happened in the Capitol over the past few days. We have to always remember that even though you feel justified or feel that somebody else has done something wrong, that still doesn't justify violence. And, and really it's saying the same message. Because as horrible as some of the things that some people have done, unless they bring harm to another individual, no matter what it is that they've said, no matter what their political ideology is, it still doesn't elevate to the level of violence. And this is actually being recorded on Dr. Martin Luther King Day, so I think that this is incredibly appropriate. This is the guy who started the nonviolence movement. It was his idea. He was the one that did it the best. Did you know that Dr. King made every single person that marched with him sign a pledge that they committed themselves that they would not, no matter what, engage in violence. And he made sure that all of them signed this before they would march with him because he knew that if they were ever tempted, if they had even a moment of weakness, even when people that were in power were doing real injustices to them, that they could not engage in violence because violence doesn't work. The doctrine that King preached is the same doctrine that Jesus Christ talks about in his Sermon on the Mount. That even when an enemy offends you, persecutes you, talks evil about you, you turn the other cheek. You don't engage in violence. Their bad action does not justify you doing evil towards them as well. Two wrongs never make a right. This is something that Dr. King understood. This is something that Jesus understood and something that Jesus taught others and his disciples, including people like Dr. King, to do. That you cannot snuff out evil with more evil. In the same way, you cannot stop violence with more violence, even when it is justified, even when it's understandable why someone would want to engage in violence, that still doesn't make it okay for you to do so unless you're acting in immediate self-defense of your life. Ultimately, that's what it boils down to. Both these great men and many Christians who have lived throughout the ages understood that very basic principle of the teachings of Christ, that speech is not violence. Ever wonder where Superman gets his incredible powers? Some people say it's the yellow sun of Earth, but I think it's because he subscribes to this channel and likes my videos. Now, I'm not saying that if you subscribe to my channel you'll necessarily wake up tomorrow as a super strong, nearly invincible alien, but it definitely doesn't hurt your chances.